Now y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess. So let's get into it. What is going on, y'all? This be your boy, Scott, by Nature TV, and we're here for another episode of Yes for the Mess, okay? And we're here to talk about a couple of things today, all right? Now, before we get into today's Yes for the Mess, I'm just here to let you guys know that today is the Porsche Family Values. I don't know why I keep calling it Porsche Family Values. The Porsche Family Matters um, panel with me, myself, Terrence. Well, I keep saying me, myself, myself, Terrence, and Josiah. It's the three of us. We started our own little spinoff panel talking about Porsche Family Matters, okay? Now, Josiah would not be able to participate tonight, and it was supposed to be on his channel tonight. So it would be on my channel instead, and me and Terrence are going to hold it down. Now, I did reach out to Rodney the Voice to sit in for Josiah tonight, but he can't do it. I'm sorry, y'all. I tried to make it happen, but it just ain't going to happen this time around. So um, he did want to do it, though. He, he really wanted to do it, but he can't do it because he's out of town. So, um, you know, maybe another time he could come in with us or whatever and do the, and do the thug fizzle with us before it ends or whatnot. So, yeah, be sure to tune in tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Me and Terrence will be holding it down tonight, okay? Now, with that being said, all right, we're about to get into today's Yes for the Mess, and we're going to start off with the very first story today. Now, this ain't necessarily no mess, really. This ain't no mess, Um it can't be no mess because, I mean, it's very serious. It's too serious to be called mess. So, um, you know, I don't need nobody coming at me because I remember one time I did a yes for the mess and I said um, Bobby Brown's son had passed away and they was talking about, you dumb bastard. This isn't no mess. This is a serious matter. It's hot topics. This is a hot topic column. It's called yes for the mess. So, you know, whatever. But, um, but yeah, we're going to start this thing off with um, Nick Cannon. Now, um, yesterday when I did Yes for the Mess, I was giving him all types of praise and kudos for his package yesterday, but only for me to learn after the video dropped that his son passed away to a, uh, to a brain tumor, his youngest son at that. Um, I think he talked about it on his show the other day. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about it now. I got an article here from CNN.com and you guys already know how I do it over here with the article. So we're going to D you know, read it and dissect it, discuss it, do whatever we're going to do. OK, so let's get into this article. OK, so television host and actor Nick Cannon shared with his talk show audience on Tuesday that his youngest child, Zen, has died over the weekend. I lost my youngest son to a condition called hydro. Oh, shit. I cannot pronounce that for nothing. But basically it was a. um invasive uh, midline brain tumor, brain cancer, basically. That's what that was. I'm sorry, y'all. Sorry I can't pronounce it. I know y'all hate it when I read articles anyway, but I'm sorry, but I just couldn't pronounce it, okay? Um, the five-month-old infant was Cannon's child with model Alyssa Scott. He had six other children from other relationships. Why is this thing in the way? Cannon shared that he spent this past weekend with his son in California. And not only did we get to see the sunrise, but we also got to see the sunset. I didn't know how I was going to handle today, but I wanted to grieve with my family. I think that's it, you guys. All righty then. So that's pretty much the gist of that situation with Nick, oops, with Nick Cannon and his son. Okay. Um, that is, that's horrible. That's very horrible to lose your son that young like that to, to a brain tumor. That is a whole lot, but there, there, but you know, that, that happens sometimes. Um, and I'm saying that because I know somebody personally from my hometown, um, her son actually was able to survive it, but, um, he too, had a brain tumor and that was a lot like she had people having to donate to the GoFundMe and stuff like that to help save her son and get the surgery that he needed and all types of stuff. So, you know, that is crazy. But, um, you know, I know we've been giving Nick Cannon a lot of slack lately for some of the stuff that he's been saying as far as having all these damn kids and things of that nature. But we could put all of that to the side to get him 
the comfort that he really needs at this point in time. So I really do feel bad for Nick Cannon. I mean, losing a child is horrible. I mean, you know, I don't want any kids. You know, I talked to a man that got a child. So I and I hear, you know, the things that he deals with with his child and, and when his child gets sick and stuff like that. So I definitely understand how he feels. But, you know, for me personally, I do not want no kid of my own. I have my I have several different reasons as to why I don't want any children. But um, it's just like, you know, um, I feel bad for Nick. That's a lot to deal with. That's really a lot to deal with. Um, I wish him the best and I hope that he's able to get past this the best way that he can because losing a child is one thing. Like I said, I've never had kids, but I know people that have lost their kids and that, that's something that they never get over. Just like when a child loses a parent, that's that's not something that the kid could ever get over losing a parent. You can't get over that. Like that's this always going to be a hole in your heart forever. You know what I mean? So um, I want to send my special regards and special condolences out to Nick Cannon and his family. And his other kids, because not only is Nick Cannon um, grieving, his kids are grieving too, because that was their youngest brother, okay? So um, that's it for Nick Cannon. So we're going to move on into DJ Paul, okay? Let's we'll move on to DJ Paul. Now, as you guys already know, that this past week, there was this epic versus battle between Bone Thugs and Harmony and 3-6 Mafia, okay? And you guys already know. That as much as I love Bone Thugs and Harmony, I was team 3-6, okay? Team 3-6. Tear the club up. Tear the club up. You know what I'm saying? I'm sipping on some scissor. Sip, sipping on some sip. Sipping on some scissor. What else? I got to stay fly. I, 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 till I die. I, 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 I. What else? Ever since I can't remember, I've been popping my collar, popping, popping my collar, popping, popping my collar. Ever since I can't remember, I've been working these holes. Ugh. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, and my favorite. It's not a 3-6 Mafia song, but it's somebody from 3-6 Mafia. Where them dollars at, nigga? Where them dollars at? I'm chilling heavy, understanding that it is Gangsta Boo. You know that's, you know, I love with some Gangsta Boo. Or Lil Chat. You ain't mad, is you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god or uh what is it um chicken 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 head yeah you like my outfit don't even fake the deal i thought you said you had your girl on the light bill always in my face talking this and that you know what y'all gonna y'all gonna make me have a whole three six mafia concert okay okay in your face drinking on the head I'm gonna boss cause your ass need some tic tac. But you need some gum, breath like some thunder. What you looking at? I don't want your phone number, please. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my favorite. Don't save her. She don't wanna be saved. Don't save her. I wanna be saved. Let me stop. 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 Cause I know y'all get upset when folks be singing. But you know, I love me some music. So I love Three Six Mafia. Okay, so um, DJ Paul just wanted to give his um, sentiments on what happened between Busy Bone and um, Juicy J. You know what I mean? He wanted to give his side of the story about the scuffle that occurred on stage at that versus battle, okay? Now, this article here comes from the rapbasement.com, and we're about to get into it, y'all. So uh, let's talk about it, okay? Now, one of the most anticipated battles in hip-hop finally went down last week when the three six mafia and bone thugs and harmony went hit for hit on versus if you recall this was initially planned out during the pandemic before swizz beats and timberland attempted to get involved the show was briefly shelved before taking place on december the third things went south quickly during the event while busy bone demanded some respect Juicy J immediately cussed out Busy Bone, who hurled a water bottle at 3-6 Mafia's side of the stage, and all hell broke loose. Juicy J leaped towards Bone Thugs, while ready to brawl, ready to brawl while Gangsta Boot offered some hilarious color commentary. Busy Bone was then removed and then returned to the stage shortly thereafter. DJ Paul recently sat down with Hip Hop DX where he shared his side of the story and he explained that 3-6 Mafia didn't do anything to contribute to fuel the tension in the room. However, things had already begun to heat up with Busy's Instagram posts already stiff mood. The funny part about it is that he hasn't toured with the guys for like two years, DJ Paul told DX. Bone don't even fuck with him. 
I'm not in their business. I don't have nothing to do with their business and I don't even care. I just stood for my boy, Juicy J. That's my brother. We're busy through this shit at him. I stood in front of him and was ready to handle business. I'm not going to let nobody mess with anyone on my team. And that's what it's about. It's about team. Paul also addressed Busy's claim that Three Six Mafia was mocking the the, the double time the group's double time flow. He said they never mocked him the entire time because we knew what Busy Bone was on. Based on a series of Instagram posts leading up to the event, he did post calling us devil worshippers. We're not devil worshippers. Juicy J and and Project Pat's daddy is a preacher. We're not no we're not no damn devil worshippers. He added, nonetheless. Paul appears to be down to work with Busy Bone on some new music in the future. He said that he would love to produce a whole body of work for Busy Bone, but he just got to get it together. I fuck with dude tough like I love dude. Put that in there. I'm a fan. He said, I would love to produce a project with me and Busy Bone. That's like, oh my God, it would be so hard, but he got to get it together. Would you be down for a DJ Paul produce project from Busy Bone? Let us know. Okay, y'all, now that was DJ Paul talking about the situation that happened between Busy Bone and Juicy J. Now, all I got to say is this right here. I am totally in agreement with DJ Paul on this situation. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a versus battle. It's a battle. It's a battle. Battle. You have friendly banter all the time. You know what I mean? You got friendly banter. Y'all, y'all, y'all talk y'all shit. Y'all do whatever you do. Yes, but now Fat Joe and J and Ja Rule did that on the last versus on their versus battle. The only problem is Fat Joe took it too far when he disrespected Ja Rule and Vita, calling them some crackhead looking bitches and all this other shit that he was saying. You know what I mean? So yes, Fat Joe took it to a whole nother extreme when he got his big ass up there and started doing all his other shit. Now that's true. That's true. So yes, that is the facts right here. That's the facts. That's the facts. That's the facts. But I just do feel like Busy Bone was all, like, I didn't even know nothing about the post about devil worshiping and shit like that. I didn't even know that because of the simple fact that, you know, I don't follow Busy Bone. I don't follow nobody from Bone Thugs and Harmony. So I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But the same point in time, I just feel like this right here at the end of the day, like, bruh, like you're going to really sit up here and do this extra shit on the stage and think that ain't nobody going to check you about it. You got life all the way fucked up, my nigga, if you think when nobody going to check you about it. Like, come on now. Like, these niggas is from Memphis. Memphis is two hours away from me, so I already know what they give. Memphis ain't to be fucked with okay it ain't to be fucked with so you can't be fucking with them like that and you know what i'm saying gangsta boo cussed your ass out as you know she should have because you were doing way too much okay way too much in the situation and yeah like you just showed yourself to be a punk a sissy and a sore loser that's how you came across you know what i mean Tell them they mocking you they weren't mocking you they were just Doing a banter, nobody else on it on your side was offended by nothing that they said. So why the fuck you offended? You know what I mean? So please sit the fuck down. At the end of the day, D DJ Paul is doing what the fuck me and Maddie would be doing if the Boys Night Out crew was out somewhere and we was out there and somebody tried to fuck with Jamar or Josiah or even Terrence for that matter. We're gonna be ready to get it in. That's just what we do. You know what I mean? So I get it. Like we're not gonna let nobody fuck with nobody in our group in our clique none of that we ain't gonna let nobody fuck with nobody over here we're gonna always have each other's back and that's just what it is so i am totally team dj paul on this situation i don't see nothing that he said that was wrong at all um and i do think that if he worked with busy bone on the record i think it will be hot dj paul is an um a great producer he knows how to give you a hot ass you know hit like you know, that's why the um, Three Six Mafia songs are always so good because DJ Paul is a beast on that production. Like, he's a beast on that production, and that's just what it is. So, yes, it'll be something different. It'll be something new for Busy Bone to work with um, DJ Paul. He'll give them what well, he'll give um, him that Memphis sound, pretty much. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing wrong with him having a Memphis sound. Ain't nothing wrong with it at all. Like, I would, shit, if I was a singer, I would want that Memphis sound. I, shit. I don't know why DJ Paul ain't never worked with K. Michelle. They both from Memphis, so give her one of them Memphis club bangers and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So that's all I gotta say about that situation, child. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm definitely DJ Paul, team DJ Paul on that situation. And it's not just because I'm I'm all the way team three six mafia when it come down to it, but you know it's just the facts. It's the facts. Busy Bone did way too much. Busy Bone decided that he was gonna come for the people over there, and he was in for a rude awakening. And that's just what it is. So it is what it is, child. So we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is Mariah Carey and Beyonce, honey. Now. Lil, um, not Lil, but L.A. Reid says that his ideal versus battle would be between Mariah Carey 
and Beyonce. He won Mariah Carey and Beyonce to go head to head on the versus battle. I know a lot of people have been wanting to see Beyonce on the versus battle. I know a lot of people have been talking about Mariah Carey doing a versus battle. That is all facts here. That's facts, that's facts, that's facts on facts, okay? So what we're going to do is this article right here, it comes from the Jasmine brand. So we're going to discuss it real quick. Let me get off camera because you know I got I get off camera when I do my videos up here. And um, so I can read the article. So let's talk about it. So could the ultimate diva face off be coming to versus legendary record executive L.A. Reid wants Mariah Carey and Beyonce to go into a hit for hit versus a battle. Um, L.A. sat down with the real host to discuss a topic he knows plenty about music when asked about who he thought should take the stage next on Swiss Beats and um, Timbaland's versus, L.A. Um, responded with, it's Mariah Carey versus Beyonce. He highlighted that the battle would be epic due to their massive fan bases and countless hits and exceptional legacies. B is the queen, right? We know that B is the queen, but we also know that sometimes Mariah might be slightly underrated for how long her career has lasted, how many hits she has. She practically owns Christmas. Mariah's ex-husband, um, Nick Cannon, would beg to differ. In an interview with The Breakfast Club in August, Nick said that no one could go up against Mariah Carey except for disgraced singer R. Kelly. He explained, Mariah writes. That's what people got to understand. Mariah is a musician. I'm not impressed by people who can perform songs that it took 30 people to make with you. Ooh, the shade, honey. The shade, the shade, the shade. Um, the Breakfast Club host Charlemagne the Guard noted that um, practically every artist in the industry has some assist assistance in, write in the writing department, including Beyonce. Nick is adamant about his stance and he continued. The only person in this day and age that could have gone against Mariah Carey because she writes all of her songs, because she writes all of her songs and actually produces all of her songs, she puts the songs together and performs at a high level is R. Kelly. L.A. served as an executive producer on Mariah's huge comeback success, The Emancipation of Mimi in, in 2005. He suggested the title of the project and his other input prepared Mariah back into superstardom. The two worked together again on Mariah's 2008 album, E equals MC squared. Although L.A. Reid has worked with just about every name in music, he hasn't directly produced any projects with Beyonce. Do you think that Beyonce versus Mariah Carey would be a good match? And I'm here to tell you that I don't think that this would be a good match. I don't think that it would be. Mariah Carey and Beyonce is not a good match to me. Like, they don't have nothing in common. Their music is not nothing in common. Like, I don't see how the hell they can go head to head in some hits. I just don't see it. Like, I don't see it at all. Um, I personally feel like the best person that could go against Mariah is Mary. Um, they don't have really have the same type of music either. But at the same time, they, they both came out in the 90s. They were both trailblazers. They both were big names in the 90s and the 2000s as well. So the only people that I could see going up against each other really at this point is Mary and Mariah. Really, Mary and Mariah. And that would be a hard matchup, to be honest. Due to the fact that they're both legends. They're both icons. They're both people that we name when we say we were, you know, um, inspired by them. A lot of people say they were inspired by Mariah Carey. A lot of people say that they were inspired by Mary J. Blige. We want to see that happen. I don't see Beyonce and Mariah Carey being a good matchup. The only, pe the only person I can see going against Beyonce is Rihanna. Like, that's it. I want to see a Beyonce and Rihanna versus. I don't want to see no Beyonce and Mariah Carey. They're not in the same league to me. They're not. Yes, Beyonce is a superstar and everything else, but Mariah is Mariah. And not too many people are seeing Mariah, and not too many people are seeing Mary. So I want to see Mary and Mariah go at it. Mar Mar Mariah and Mary can go at it. Mariah and Mary have a great deal of respect for each other. Mariah even said that Mary has inspired her just a little bit in some of her music. So no, you know, I want to see that. I don't want to see nothing else. I want to see Mary and Mariah. I don't want to see Mariah and Beyonce. That's not good to me. No. So next up, we got Tristan Thompson. Once again, we've been talking about him for the last week now, and I'm about tired of talking about his dirty dick ass. Okay. Now, apparently, he is serving his new baby mama, Marley Nichols, with a with a damn gag order. He don't want her to say his name, period. He don't want her saying his name, period, at all. Okay. So he he out here looking for gag orders and shit. 
Okay, so uh, we're finna get into this article here from page six. And then after that, we're going to be done with today's Yes for the Mess. Let me go back off uh, camera real quick so we can read this article, okay? So Tristan Thompson filed an emergency gag order on Monday in an attempt to prevent his alleged baby mama, Marley Nichols, from taking their paternity suit even more public than it already is. The NBA star filed the request and um, filed a request in Harris County, Texas, just three days after news of the lawsuit went public. In his filing obtained by page six, Thompson claims the personal trainer's intention all along was to try to achieve some sort of notoriety and gain some for herself in this lawsuit. Um, Thompson, age 30, alleges that Nichols' inclusion of Snapchat messages purposely sent between the two, which he denies ever writing and sending as an attempt to smear him, and they are wholly and clearly fabricated, according to the filing. Thompson also claims that Nichols altered the media of him alleging father fathering her child and of competing lawsuits in California and Texas. Um, despite the court previously granting a protective order to guard documents that contain se sensitive and personal information. The Sacramento King star who claimed he'll be retiring after this season further alleges that the filing that he suffered damages and extreme distress. He's requesting the court hold an emergency hearing for a gag order and also wants Nichols to post a $30,000 bond to deter her from violating the order. Initially, additionally, um, Thompson wants Nichols to pay for his fees to file for the request. A judgment has yet to be made and Nichols' attorney declined to comment. Child, that is a hot ass mess, child. That's a hot ass mess. So now you done went out here and fucked this woman, got her pregnant, and now you don't want her to say your name. Niggas ain't shit but hoes and tricks. That's it. That's it. That's it. Niggas ain't shit but hoes and tricks. I just feel like you knew, you knew what you knew what was up. Like you knew what was up, my nigga. You knew what was up. You knew what you was doing. You went out there, you cheated on um um Chloe Kardashian crusty face ass once again. And now that you done got caught up and now that the shit is public now, it's just like this. You wanna you wanna sit up here and get gag orders and shit like that. My thing about that is you just need to calm the fuck down, deal with your karma, and just deal with the fact that you got somebody pregnant who put your ass on blast, and now you got to deal with it. That's just dead on that. It's just it's just dead on that. Like you did it, so now you want now you want some protection. Now you don't want nobody to say your name and shit. Boy, bye, boy, bye. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Like you got to deal with it now. And Chloe talking about she thought she would change and how hurt her ass is. Don't nobody give a fuck about uh, Chloe being hurt. Don't nobody give a fuck about Chloe being hurt because I know I don't. I don't fucking give a damn about her ass being hurt. Period. You know what I mean? I, you know, I don't give a fuck about being hurt at all. So it's crazy to me, but it is what it is. But that's all I really got to say about that. What y'all got to say about Trish to try to get some damn gag going on this lady? He don't want her to say his name just that fucking bad. Child, it is what it is. With that being said, child, this be your boy Scotty by nature. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell whenever you so you can be notified whenever video drops. Follow me on social media at Twitter and IG. They will both be down below in the uh, description box. And also, um, if you want me to follow you back on IG, all you got to do is hit me up in the DMs, and I would definitely follow you back with the hashtag message Team Scotty. With that being said, you guys, your boy is out of here until my next video. I'll holler at y'all later.